We're gonna move over now to one of my other favorite guests that we have on the Tom O'Brien Show, and that is gonna be Tim Ord. Now, if you wanna see what Tim Ord has to offer, you can go to the Ord-Oracle.com. Again, that is Ord-Oracle.com. He comes on every Tuesday and Thursday. You can see the archives of our interviews with him up on our YouTube channel, Tiger Financial News Network. Make sure to give that video a like and a subscribe. If you go over to TFNN.com, you can click the services tab at the top here, and we have two fantastic webinars uh, that were hosted by Tim Ord. This is the secret science of market tops. That is how to identify market tops. And then the six secret ratios every trader should know. They are fantastic and I strongly recommend checking those out. We are joined now by Tim Ord. Tim, how are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Um... So are we showing on your screen or are we showing yep. on my screen? No, I have I have the charts. All right. Okay. So let's uh should we dig into it? I think we should. I'm gonna pull up chart All one right. right now. All right. This this is a seven indicator yep. and it's the uh the bottom window is the uh, ten day average of the uh equity put call ratio readings and the next higher window is the five day average. And I, I drew uh, dotted lines there, are showing when those two time frames, the five and ten day, get into bearish territory. Normally, at at least you're at a uh, stalls the rally, if not produces a, uh, a decline. So some is not right right now for the market to continue higher. And so you got to remember, you know, basically. 30 days, not quite, but a little over 30 days away is the election. So the market, a lot of times, is going to get kind of walky in this time frame. So you're going to see some up days and down days. But the market's not going to move any direction, either extremely down or extremely up, until the election's decided. And then from there, uh, the market will, uh, will start moving. But to, over the next four weeks, we're probably going to have a, a kind of a dead market. And we'll show you reasons why as we go forward here. But anyhow, the upside is limited because the equity put call ratio readings on the five and 10 day are, are pretty much in levels that suggest the market had, will have a hard time going higher here. So upside is limited. Let's go to chart two. Perfect. We have it up. Okay. Yeah, this is another chart that kind of says the same thing. Uh, this chart goes back to, uh, looks like about mid 2017. And I marked the times uh, shaded in pink, that where the, uh, the this window, uh, well, anyhow, the SPX, this is a weekly chart, made higher highs and the ratio made lower highs. And uh, the, the, the light blue areas are timed when the, both markets made, or the SPX made higher highs and the uh, uh, SPX mixed ratio made higher highs. That's a bullish divergence. Well, we have a uh, bearish divergence right now. Since July, the market actually has made higher highs, and this ratio has made lower highs. This kind of goes along with the seminar indicator. So upside is limited here. We're most likely we'll get some sort of a pullback, but I don't think the pullback is going to be anything significant. Uh, the market does not like uncertainty. It goes in, uh, so that's the reason why the market could see uh, over the next three, four weeks. You know, it could get pretty jittery both directions. Uh, so, but yeah, upside is limited. Uh, according to seminar indicators and according to this uh, SPX fixed ratio. So let's take another look at, uh, keep going Perfect. further here, to chart number three. Yep. And here's the reason why I think downside is limited. Uh, upside, I think after the market sees who's going to be the winner is, it's going to take off to the upside. This is one of the charts that suggests kind of the same thing. And I've marked the times in, uh, the green area, uh, the green stripes you see along this chart, this chart goes back to 2007. So it takes a big chunk of time. And, uh, and, and you know, the top window is the NYSC summation index. And usually you get above a thousand, it's over a thousand right now, it's about 1112, you know, actually be exact, about 1113. And normally, uh, it's kind of hard to explain how to stay with, stay with me here, but no. normally uh, to get a, a immediate term bottom, you want the summation index to hit below minus 700. That's kind of a selling climax. And right after that, you need a buying climax to determine that that was a major bottom. And to get a, a buying climax, that ratio or the MI, 
uh, NYSE summation index needs to go to plus 1,000. And throughout this chart, I did uh, outline those with uh, blue lines and red lines. The green lines or the green shaded areas are times when you didn't have a selling climax. The summation just went up to uh, plus 1,000. So that's a sign of strength without a selling climax. And they usually appear uh, a lot of times in mid, uh, mid rallies, mid, mid major rallies. In 2010, it kind of went sideways for a little bit before it went on to new highs. But all the other times, it pretty much didn't really decline much. And the market really kind of just it, it shows a sign of strength is present right now because its summation index is a plus. 1,000 right now, even though we're going to election time, there's a lot of uncertainty. The outcome will be new highs, according to the summation index. Uh, does that make clear to oh, you? Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Definitely. All right. So there could be some minor pullbacks here, but there's it's more or less this market's going to trade sideways. Uh, I mean, can it retrace 3, 4, 5%? Maybe, but 10% is probably out of the question. Uh, you know, maybe not even. You know, I'm, I'm thinking probably three, three percent. You know, there's there's a gap down below us around five sixty, maybe there. At worst case, we may get to five forty. Uh, this is on the SPYs, but that's it. Uh, it's it's, it's going to flip sideways. You're going to have some up days, down days, and this is going to continue for the next uh, uh, months until until you get right around the election time. The market most likely will start going up before the announcement of the president. The market will know who the president will be before it actually is announced. And uh, so don't wait for November 5th to, to get in the market. Chances right. are this market's already gone. But end of October is probably, I'll be looking for a signal. And the same signals will, will come as usual. You'll have panic and you know everybody will be panicked in the market and we'll be stepping in buying it so but the next three weeks is going to be you know i'm probably not going to participate much in the market here because it's 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 to be too many whipsaws so right i know it's uh time is about ended here so yeah we'll no that was day. fantastic uh, yeah and folks if you have any questions um or need any clarification just ask me in the youtube or on discord tim state right there folks We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup. I'm joined by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Uh, we're just looking over uh, some charts before we went to the break. Tim, we did have a question for you, and um, if it's better answered on Thursday, uh, no problem at all. But I wanted to get it out there. It's one of our uh, listeners, Kate. She was saying that you showed this WAG breath indicator a few weeks ago, which su suggested a continuation of the bull market. She was curious if this could lead to an eventual parabolic move months out like we saw in 2000. And I'm not familiar with that move in particular. Uh, she says, I'm trying to understand if he sees any parallels with other time frames based on his WAG thrust indicator. She thinks that's about it. Well, actually, we're, we're, that's the next chart up. So uh, there you we'll, go, Kate. <laughs> yeah, go, go to chart. So oh, yeah, I was I was around. Yeah, the. the Actually, I wasn't really familiar with the uh, uh, Zwag breast thrust indicator back in 2000. I wasn't really using it at the time. But the market did pretty much went parabolic, but it went parabolic on on very few stocks. Uh, I've been looking at uh, charts uh, like the uh, comparing the, the acceleration we're having now compared to years past. And it almost looks like at some point we're heading into some poor, uh, parabolic move. I don't, you know, I don't think it's going to be this year or next year, but I think within the next five years, I think this whole process of this market going up this fast in this short period of time, I mean, we're, we're doing back-to-back 20% uh, uh, annual returns here, and that's pretty rare going back to, you know, 1930s and stuff. You know, normally the market, I think it was like 9.7% average per year, counting all the declines and whatever. And we're we're way past that, so I don't think the the Zwag breast stress indicator uh, is identifying that. It's just the, the acceleration of the up move in in the market. It tells me that yeah, we're probably in the midst of uh, a kind of a parabolic move in the market. Uh, there's just too much money out there. Right. At some point, the market's going to 
or the Fed's going to, not the Fed, but our government is going to cut um, that money supply, which is a lot of fuel for the market. And once they do that, that's when uh, I think uh, the market could see something like 2000 all over again. I see. <laughs> but I don't know when they're going to do it. You know, politically, it's not um, a good idea to, to kill the market. So right. I don't but it is coming. As uh, post-election behavior. Yeah. Yeah, but it ain't going to be this year. So, <laughs> um, but, you know, it it, uh, it, is, it is coming and. And I'll be prepared for it because back in 2000, I really, I actually did catch the 2000 top, but I didn't know what I was doing as much as I do now. Right. Uh, but, but anyhow, the, you know, this is the, uh, we're on chart four right now, which is the Zag Breast Stress Indicator. My point of this chart, back on August 5th or August 19th, we did have another as wag breast stress indicator suggesting that we're still in a pro and a bull move going up here these wag breast stress indicators don't show up in a bear market they only show up in a bull market and so this is kind of reinforces the idea that we had one in in april this year we had another one in august and we got the summation above plus 1000 right now all those things suggest that this market has way further to go to the upside. But I'm just saying over the next month here, because we're going into an election, uh, the market may get a little wonky. Right. But if you're a long-term investor, you can stay long because downside is minimal. <coughs> Excuse me, let me give me a drink here. Oh, yeah, no problem. No, and this is all great stuff to, to see as well, right? Kind of get the component on the shorter term and then what we can see on the kind of grander uh, scale as well. Right, yeah, every, everything is looks good. There's, there's going to be a minimum. There's not going to be a, my opinion, there's not worth the risk really short in the market here, even sure. though there's a lot of uh, people. And it may be, but, you know, down, upside is a lot better. There's a lot more upside than downside, I'll put it that way. Right. So, anyhow, this, this wag breast stress indicator triggered back in August, and then we had another one in April. Uh, you know, that's pretty close together, suggesting this market is kind of accelerating to the upside, if anything. So, anyhow, it looks good. Minor, minor walkiness over the next several weeks. But other than that, up. Uh, new highs for the years out. Fantastic. We can get into the gold market a little bit. I think we should. A lot of movement in the gold market recently. Let me blow this down a little bit. Yeah. Perfect. It, it chart, uh, yeah, this is the... Uh, Bullish percent index, this is chart uh, five, this bullish percent index for a gold miners index. If you notice, we're hanging right around 80 percentile. Yeah. That's what happens it, it, in bull markets. This thing, the bullish percent index, which is the, uh, uh, it measures percent of stocks that are point figure bicycles in the gold miners index. So long as it stays above 60, the uptrend's in fours. And usually in bull moves, it just stays up there. Uh, it, it fluctuates in general above 60, between 60 to 85. 80, you know, if it gets any higher than that, it gets above 95, that's too exuberant. You're probably going into a high. If everything's on a buy signal, you're getting very late in a rally, and that hasn't happened yet. And most of my indicators suggesting this rally is going to go for a while. Uh, so, but we're hanging strong. You know, most stocks are starting to perk up. Even the small ones now are starting to, to perform, and uh, that's going to get more, I guess, exuberant as time goes uh, forward. Because once the gold market starts really going, it actually speeds up, and it speeds up more towards the end than from the front. Right. Uh, so there'll be a, a lot of stuff going on over the next year, and maybe probably a couple, three years, depends how the it just gels out, but there's no sign of any top of any consequence in the current position. We can, uh, I don't know if we get time to do all this, but we can go to the next chart. We can go to the next chart. If it goes over, obviously you can come back on for the uh, short segment at the end, without a doubt. All right. This uh, this chart is the, uh, the bottom window seems to work the best which is the 50-day average of the up-down volume advanced client indicators. And along this indicator stays above zero, which it has. In other words, it's measuring up volume compared to down volume. There's more up volume going into the market than down volume. Uh, the trend's up. Uh, you can see some consolidations along the way. It kind of makes higher high. GDX is making higher highs, higher lows. But the trend's up. You know, we're coming in as of today, almost 12, uh, 
It's plus 12.89 right now. That's up from 12.02 yesterday. Uh, so it's, it's hanging right around that plus 10, plus 15 area. Uh, no sign of a, of a top there. And we can crunch this in. Chart number seven is the monthly chart. It's along uh, this chart. Uh, the bottom window is the, the monthly GDX up down volume, and I pulled a Bollinger Band on it. The <laughs> next window up is the uh, GDX advanced decline on a monthly. As long as those two indicators stay above the mid Bollinger Band, which are way above it, the uptrend's intact. And so if you go back and look at most of these indicators or these monthly indicators, these charts uh, produce a minimum of a year and a half rally. So we're in the midst wow. of a, at least another year to go, and maybe more. Don't know. We have to wait and see. So that is up. Yeah, so. no, that's fantastic. And we have seen some of the smaller guys moving. Obviously, VGZ was one that made some nice moves, at least in the gold miners. Tim, thank you so much for joining us. I really look forward to having you on, and I know all of our viewers do too. And we'll uh, see you Thursday. All right, sounds good. Thank you. Take care, Tim. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back for a very short segment.